Hey, sports fans, Larry Eater, socialing the distance, and we are featuring Tom Bedford. He is the race director of the British Olympic Trials. Some of you will recognize his charming face. Uh, he set a world record as we've had him on now for twice in the last 90 days. But he's had a little bit of a tan. You know, he was in isolation in Portugal. Tom, great to see you. Hey, it's good to be back. Uh, what Thank beverage you are you are, are you having right now, may I ask? Um, I'm still on a cider. Um, I've gone to Fascia Cider tonight. It's eight, okay. it's eight o'clock here in the evening, uh, not the morning. Well, good. well it's good. That, you know, well, we, we haven't drank at eight in the morning. We have at noon. You know, I'm, but, sure, you I'm know, sure we've drank early in the morning at some point, Larry. Or, 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 yes, that is true. Thank you. But uh, it is great seeing you. Um, so we're going to talk about this British Olympic trials, which is your dream. I was very worried with the pandemic craziness, how you were going to put it on. So why don't you tell us a little bit about how things are going? So we're three, we're three weeks out now. Um, every, I think, you know, in the UK at the moment, I mean, you know, when I spoke to you, what it was, it was maybe early December or, or, or yep. late November. And we just announced that, that this was happening. Um, one of the, you know, one of the biggest things that that's happened since then was, you know, British athletics made a big call early, early on saying, you know, listen, we need a COVID secure, um, location and event. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was a right call. I mean, you know, I, I mean, not even me, you know, I, you know, we all thought that was going to be a, this second wave in, in the UK and Europe and that, but I don't think anyone really thought it was going to go as bad as it did with the different variants and the strains and that. Um, yeah. So actually, you know, um, you know, some of the big calls that British athletics, uh, Cherry Alexander and, um, and, uh, and quite a few others took then where, you know, when it wasn't so bad and, it was the right call. So, we're, so yeah, so we're now three weeks out. Um, the events changed a lot. We've added um, race walking into it. So, cool. um, so what's it's the distance? A twenty k race walk. Okay. So, um, you know, again, they were they, they were they had a venue elsewhere. All, all these other venues that all these races were going to happen uh, at. You know, have all you know fallen through. Even our mass race that we were hoping to hold on the same weekend. Um, you know, we just weren't able to put that on, so we've we've postponed that to later on in the year. So, um, but the, but the trials need you know needed to stay, um, and um, you know the athletes needed needed to uh, compete and qualify for for Sapporo, and um, you know that they're you know that they're toughing it out mainly in the UK probably this time. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not sure how many managed to get abroad. Um, I know, I know there was a group trying to get out to, um, Steve Vernon's group was trying to get out to Portugal and that wasn't able to happen. So the, the you know, I feel really sorry for a lot of these guys cause they've probably had the toughest build up. Um, you know, any soccer fans who, who, who watched the English premiership would have been watching the games from December. Um, the whole of January was essentially, um, you know, just horizontal rain. So these wow. guys, are, oh, the man. guys and girls have, have been, you know, and the, you know, have been working in really tough conditions. Um, you know, it's it's um, you know they really deserve good weather um, on the day. Um, but yeah, no, we're there now. So we're three weeks out. Um, you know, one more one more hard week for the athletes this weekend. Um, the weather's getting a little bit better here, and then they they'll enter their taper. Talk to me. Uh, give me the top five or six men who will be competing. I think that I think the men's race. So just to recap, Callum Hawkins has been pre-selected, the only pre-selected uh, marathon runner. Okay. Um, and I think it sort of comes down to um, you've got Johnny Meller who's ran two qualifying times, um, and Ben Connor who ran um, yep. a qualifying time in, in in COVID London marathon last year. We the rules are we've got two, first two over the line with an Olympic qualifying time go to Sapporo. So it's it's a really, really interesting race because these guys have to turn up um, and they're going to have to compete um, to secure their place. Now, if it's really bad, you know, they're probably all hoping for really bad weather um, yeah. and wind and, 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 and everything else. Um, but they're going to have to turn up because you've got um, um, Dewey Griffith, um and yep. um <laughs> who's the wild card I, I think all of them really fear jury um and then you've got you know the old veteran um chris thompson who's always got always got a big performance in 
in the bag. Um, yeah. And um, I, I'm, I'm now back in London. I'm now looking out my window and I'm seeing Tomo doing his efforts this week. I saw him twice going round um, in Bushy Park in Teddington. And um, yeah, no, so, so he looks as though he's going well, you know, according to social media, if that's a form guide, Dewey looks <laughs> as though he's um, holding the injuries together, which is a big, you know, a big problem for both Tomo and, and Dewey and that. So I'd sort of say, you know, them to, you know, have a real, so you've got two guys there have got a real opportunity to, they certainly got the talent to get the qualifying time. Um, um, and then you've got two other guys who've got the qualifying time and are going into this almost you know, we're going to have to sit, you know, we're going to have to sit and just try and control this. Yeah. We've got pacemakers who are going to be going, um, just focusing on the men's for a second. We've got pacemakers going to 25 and 30 K. Okay. Um, wow. Okay. You know, we're, we're, um, we're about to announce it, but, um, but um, it, it could be Callum Hawkins that, uh, um, that might be coming down and uh, wow. giving us a hand. Um, yeah. But you know, the time, we, you know, the pace making time, we're going to go for a 65. So just to get the 2.11.30 qualifying time. Um, so once you sort of break it down from, you know, they've just got to get, you know, 2.11.29. And, yeah. you know, you know, Dewey and, uh, um, and Tomo need to, need to, that's all the time that they've got to think of and come top two. And then you've got, you know, as I said, you've got the other guys just sitting on them. So that's quite a fascinating event. Um, yeah. From that point of view, listen, there are there are others, um, but um, but for me, there that's the standout from the men's point of view. Um, so that's going to be very interesting there. The women's, um, the women's, well, it, it, it's it, it's actually going to be a bit more interesting. Um, mm -hmm. Steph twelve. So oh, we yeah. got four, so we got four women who have got qualifying times. Okay. Um, one of them is Steph twelve, who's who's going to concentrate um, on the ten k, I believe. So yeah. she's not running. And so we've been in a situation where no pre-selected athletes. Um, wow. the, three, the three left are Charlotte Perdue, um, yeah. um, Jess uh, Piasecki, and um, Stephanie Davis. But the women have also, there's probably three or four women who haven't got the qualifying time and, and have a real shot at, um, have a real shot at getting that time. So again, we've, we're going to be in a situation the same as the men, where you know Charlotte is the is the fastest. So you know, you know, it wouldn't surprise me. You know, <laughs> Charlotte just you know probably would like would like a run out and 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 you know, but doesn't have to do too too much because the chances of maybe you know if I was selecting the team, um, the chances of third place running faster than what Charlotte uh, Charlotte Perdue's ran um, is 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 probably unlikely. But again, I think the, the the women that competition. I think you've got you know five or six girls who could really really pull it together um, mm -hmm. and do qualifying time and go and go to the Olympics. So um, you know the, the the ones with the qualifying times, you know Stephanie Davis um, and Joe Pasecki, they need to you know they need to turn up fit and sit and kick. Joe's the one who did so well at London, right? Um, yes. Um, um, so, um, sorry, Joe, um, Jess. So yes, Jess. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. So no, uh, uh, I mean, you know, um, London, you, I mean, you look back at London, I mean, you know, sort of saying anyone did well in London, um, yeah. is a bit of a no, no, cause the weather was so bad and so different for the women, you know, um, yeah. Sarah Hall were obviously, obviously ran very well, but there was a lot of women, your Lily Partridge and, um, and Steph 12 sort of pulled out and that. Yeah. So there was, you know, there was some, there was some okay, okay runs from that. Um, but Jess, Jess ran, um, okay. Well there, um, you know, it's, it, it's, it's quite interesting. Um, we, there was a, another British athlete, the name literally has just forgotten, um, left me at this moment in time, but it was 11 seconds out. Um, wow. from, uh, from it, I think it, that was in the marathon project. Um, yeah. so, you know, so there's some, there's some people in and around it, you know, 30 seconds, 40 seconds off of the Olympic qualifying time yeah. that, um, you know, that are still there and, and, and are in and around. So there's, they're two fascinating, two fascinating events. Um, and, and I'm just really excited for it. And the, the closer we get now, now we're putting the finishing touches to, 
the race from you know getting my head up from some of the COVID stuff that we're the the hoops that we're trying to jump which we are jumping through um I, I'm, I have to remind myself I get quite excited about the races that we've got coming up yeah talk to me about the course the course is um so again I can't remember the timelines but we've got um we put an original course it was there um <clears throat> which was more of a 5k loop and okay. um and you know we got a couple of coaches down there and um and you know there was a there, there was probably two tight turns that um probably weren't great for it but you know really good elsewhere but we found a faster course um okay. which was smaller so we've now we've, we've now got a course of the first small lap will be um 1695 meters and then we, they go into 12 laps of 3333 meters um, which is, um, you know, I mean, there's, it's really, it's, it's a really decent course. I'm going down there tomorrow to film a guy who's going to, um, um, really attack it. So we'll have some footage that I can share with you at some point. But, like um, that, yeah. but we've <clears throat> on this loop, the reason why I like it is, um, I mean, there's a stretch, there's a straight line on this 3,300 loop it, that's 1,400 meters of a straight line. And that wow. turns right, and then there's another 350 meters, and then there's a, 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 a sort of a 20 meters, and then another <laughs> another 300 meters sort of thing. So there's some real sections that um, you know. Yes, there's probably there's probably one turn that they'll lose a second on a lap. So you know, call that 12 yeah. seconds. But yeah. all the others, I've I've ran it myself um, with a bit more carrying a bit more weight than what these guys will be doing. But um, I, I've ran it at full at, at, at their pace. Um, and you know that the, you know there's there, there's there are turns and there are turns um, yeah. and this and this one's you know there's only one turn that's really going to you know slow them down by you know as much as a second. Okay. Okay. All right, Tom. Um, we were talking about the course, and then uh, which I think sounds pretty cool. It's one small lap of 1,695 meters, 12 laps of 3,300. 33 meters and um, there's some straightaways one little turn kind of sounds like um, I seem to recall a turn on the Fukuoka course that slowed people down but you know a second I don't think anybody can complain about and then we were starting to talk about um, the the COVID stuff and all the things you have to do for that so share with us a little bit about you what you as a race director have to do there yeah I mean throughout the whole process we didn't you know um you know, you've been down to events um, in in the UK called the Night of Ten Thousand Meter. Yes, Night of Ten Thousand Meter PBs that Ben Pochi puts on, and um, I think originally when when we were sort of we were getting closer because we weren't the initial favourites to put this event on. It was um, we were literally sort of the last man standing, um, mm -hmm. if I'm being truthfully honest. You know, because wow. of COVID events um, pulling out. Um, but when we were sort of getting closer and I was hearing that, you know, Manchester, who are meant to be doing it, they, they were sadly sort of, you know, having to put, uh, having to um, um, postpone. I was sort of in my mind, I was like, wow, wow. you know, we could have a night of 10,000 meters in. I mean, what I didn't mention with the course is that Kew Gardens is a Royal Botanical Garden. Yep. I mean, you know, yes, they're just running these 3,000 meter loops, but they've got um, a glass house there that's been there since 1755. Wow. Um, trees that um have been you know 900 years old and 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 crazy 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 stuff like that and it's flat as a pancake and you know you've got all these bushes and we're just about to go into cherry blossom season as well so there's going to be loads of these cherry blossoms um as they run around um but as we went through as we went for all of this i wanted to you know i was sort of thinking in the back of my mind if if covid disappears we'll have the beer tent here um, we'll have, you know, the DJ and things here and everything else. Um, and, you know, 500 spectators in and all this sort of stuff. Um, and then the second wave came and then it was sort of like, right, well, we're going to have to lose the beer tent. Um, we're going to have to lose this. We're going to have to lose that. So we've had to really strip back the whole event. Um, essentially, the every athlete gets a plus one. Mm -hmm. and, and that plus one is going to be their drinks handler. Okay. We're going to have, you know, we've probably got 40 marshals. We've got 39 wow. officials. We'll have some, you know, even the media is going to be stripped back. Um, you know, um, it, it's, 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 it sounds a little bit sorry, but it, it, it's, it's sort of, you know, they're the things that we sort of had to take. 
take sure. out to then sort of try and build back into it. I mean, you know, th- there's loads of things that I was just in my mind. It was like, oh, geez, you know, when you're stressful and that you've, you know, most directors enjoy a beer after the event. I kept thinking to myself, oh, geez, I can't wait to invite all the athletes to um, 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 to the um, ah, the gardener's pub on Q Green for a mm-hmm. beverage after the event. So, you know, win, lose or draw, you know, people can have a beer before heading home and you know the pubs aren't open over here so it's um you know so we've had the strip back so much stuff there the hotel um you know just like many athletes on the circuit at the moment they're you know they, they can order room service and that's it mm. um you know we've really had to i was i, I had a really long chat with um, um josh cox um and ben rosario um today about the marathon projects because yeah. they sort of did something in a very very similar p- position and i I, I really enjoyed that race and um, yeah. I was actually asking for their, um, you know, with limited numbers, what would you do here if you had $500? What would you spend it on here? Sure. What's, you know, um, you, you've got at the moment like lots of fans watching it. So it's good, you know, the event is now going to be live streamed. Um, you know, what what will the fans, what were the fans complaining about or, or constructive criticism? Um so I was having a really long conversation with them for about, you know, the pros and cons, what would you do differently and everything else. And it was, it was really, you know, it was a, it's a very, very different event that, um, that I imagined and, and, and also everyone else, but, um, but it's going to be safe. It's going to happen. Um, and, um, you know, just, just really looking forward to it from that point of view. So yeah, we, we you know, every athlete is going to get tested. Only athletes can go into the, the warm up zone. Um, you know, they're plus ones and, and, you know, no physios. I mean, it's really is stripping back, um, you know, stripping back the car to its engine and, um, and, and then sort of going, going there, but that's a disappointing thing. But again, you know, at least it's happening. What, um, you know, you've been involved in the sport at all different levels. I remember when you came over to the States close to what, 15 years ago to, to develop your trade, you know, and, and work on some of the biggest races in North America. Um, the pandemic is a very strange duck. Um, <laughs> we've dealt with it now for a year. And my feeling is that we're not going to get back to everything till 2022 with the Commonwealth, the Europeans and the, uh, the world champs. And there's still going to be some changes in the way we do things. Do you think we're ever going to see a day where we have uh, the London marathon course lined again with, you know, a couple million people? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a difficult one. I, the, the, there's been there's been a lot of stuff in the UK, and I think the US is it seems to be going for for this sort of plan of action. And it seems to be again, I'm not an expert in this, but I'm just sort of adding a few things up. Um, 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 lateral flow tests, um, so not your proper COVID stuff that needs to go to you know proper doctors and and proper yeah. machines, etc. Um, that, that was the, the technical do- doctor definition for you. For, I like that. Uh, anyone else at home? Yes, yes. <laughs> not that one, that one. Yes. And, um, and, um, but it's not the anal one in China. Um, yes, that, that scared the heck out of me <laughs> just a little bit. <laughs> Sorry. Um, where was I? Like, yeah, so, we, so I think what's going to happen with a lot of music festivals over here in the UK, they're talking about um, that to go in, just like a, almost a travel passport that you have to have an LFT test, yeah. which is what we're doing with the athletes for the event this year. Um, 24 hours to do it. You'll, 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 you'll sort of have your test. You'll add it to an app or, or, or something like that. Then that, that then gives you your green light to enter and validates okay. your ticket. Okay. Now that's quite interesting. So the, the, the Reading and some music festivals in the UK are, are, are looking to do that later on this year, August. Mm. Um, could I see London Marathon doing something like that um, at the London Marathon Expo? I think, you know, I think that I think that's that sounds a lot more reasonable from an athlete's point of view. Yeah. Um, 
The biggest question is, you know, what happens to spectators, which I think is another, um, I'm going to let more uh, intelligent people and, and the London Marathon worry about that because um, the beauty of Kew Gardens is we've got a big walled botanical garden. So <laughs> there's only there's only five gates in and they're all locked. And we, uh, you know, we, we're in control of that situation with London, New York, Chicago, the rest of them. You don't have that luxury. So I yeah. guess, you know, you've got the start, the finish, um and you know but 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 the vaccinations are going well here i understand they're starting to go well in, in the states um so you know i think i think you know i'm a bit more positive for the autumn um especially in the uk um where we've um we've done very well with our vaccination rollout so touch wood if there's no variants and and they're all the other the other things that could could slow it down so i could i can see london happening um in its normal capacity um there it, it might be that they shut down the embankment you know and and that last section of the course and try and limit <clears throat> spectators getting there and the, and the charities and that which you know again is, is is would be upset but at least it could ha happen so I, I i sort of i do foresee something like that happening in the uk mm -hmm. there's got to be a turning point because you know i mean geez i haven't had a wage for a year um yeah. we haven't been supporting from our government um because we're sort of you know we're, we're events so oh, yeah, um, yeah. um unlike pubs and other restaurants and that we haven't been supported um at all so i hope so um i hope our event which is on the 11th and 12th in september i'm i'm expecting full capacity for that um and um you know we're we due some good luck talk to me about uh, the marathon project what did you like about what uh, josh and ben did I, I said to, I said to them earlier on and bless them they got up at four o'clock in the morning um you know um Josh introduced me to to Ben and his new mustache and um, <laughs> and, um we you know really blessed them you know I've been I've been sort of knocking on on Josh's door for a little while just to give us you know give me his opinion yeah I what I loved about it was in the situation that we were in, we you know they adapted and brought it back to you know what I loved about it was helping the athletes, which I sort of like, which is because which is what we're doing. You know, yeah. it, it would have been very easy for British athletics to say, "Screw it, we're just going to take people off times," yeah, um, and and that's that. You know, they would have saved themselves a ton of money. They would have saved themselves another. COVID, unsecured COVID situation um, that they'd have gone through. It would have been so easy for them. And I don't know, you know, I think maybe before this event, I think they, if you asked them, they would have probably taken the other pill, um, yeah. you know, yeah. with all the hard work that we're all going through and, and, um, and, and that. But after the event, you know, what, just like all the athletes that, um, that had that opportunity and, you know, to get their times to, to just to get a race out, I really like that. I like the raw side of it. Um, did exactly what it did on the the, the, the tin. Um, it was good to hear, you know, it was really good to hear, you know, the basics. As I said, our budget is, you know, it's it's good. Thank, you know, thanks to British Athletics um, and the and the new sponsor that's um, that we're about to announce. But um, we, <laughs> without, we, we are stripping it down. You know yeah, the, the, yeah. the the athletes just like the marathon project the athletes won't get paid you know it's it's go to the olympics or or bust or or get a commonwealth games time or or yeah. something like that but you know there'll be a lot of athletes that will you know probably drop out and you know once with their um, olympic games shattered because there's um um you know because that's it it's it, it's a it's an all or nothing situation so i i i, but I enjoyed the i was in a pub watching it streaming it um, you know, um, watching some soccer and 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 that, and I had that on one phone watching the thing, and then and then on Twitter the other side. I really enjoyed. I enjoyed that. I enjoyed the rawness also of the. Um, what was it the Ekaden? Um, I, I like the. There was an Ekaden yeah. uh, race that was put together, um, and I did. I, I I really enjoyed the technology side of it, the live streaming side of it, and maybe I was looking a bit more because our event was coming up, and I'm just going through our live streaming stuff now. Um, trying to see what people want, you know, I know what people want, you know, they want up-to-date splits and everything else, but we've, we've got to really, 
bring it back, you know, so it's setting up WhatsApp groups, okay, with spotters on the course, you know, um, um, so to get as much information, we've just had, we've had so many people helping our event out, we just had Tim Hutchins and um, Mario Mauchi sign up to do our live streaming commentary. Oh, nice. Um, you know, which is great, and I'm talking to them saying, listen, you're going to be given <laughs> very, very little. I mean, you know, listen, we've got, we've got, we've done really hard. Um, we worked really hard on our, our timing mats. So they're all in the same position, which is why it's 3,333. So a lap and a half is, is 5K um, to the dot. Um, so you're going to be given this information and we're going to put, put you somewhere, you know, but bring your binoculars because, you know, <laughs> you're going to be looking up ahead to, to, to call certain stuff. You know, you're not going to be in a nice, um, Port of Kevin that you would be in London Marathon. You know, you're going to be a, a, in a three by three tent and you're going to be at the opposite ends of it because of COVID. Um, we, we're just stripping it all back. So we're really trying our best to just provide, an, I guess I guess it's an okay. You know, we're not, we're not yeah. trying, to, we're just stripping the whole event back and sure. just trying to get the splits because that's what's going to be, you know, people will be wanting to do. Yeah. Um, so that's, I think that was the big thing that I was talking to them about, you know, social media. How do you, how do we engage with this young, younger audience? Okay. You know, for it, you know, and I was having a conversation with them. I'm a Twitter guy, but you know, the, the you know, the younger people, okay. And stuff like that. I've never been into Instagram. Okay. And everything yeah. else. And now it's moved on. I know to Twitch and, um, um, Twitch and TikTok and, and, you know, you can carry on, you know, the new clubhouse. I was having a look about that, whether we should go and do some sort of audio chat during it as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, you know, we've got to strip it back and really give the bare necessities for for it. And um, and and I, that should, you know, that will do me fine because the more you complicate things with with it, you know, you've, you've something will go wrong. So, yeah, we've got two cameras, um, two electric bikes at the front and two drones. That's what we're, that's what we're going cool. with for it. And, well, yeah. um, you know, and, and I like that drone at the um, at the I think it was the Ekaden race. I like yeah. that, you know, they, they had a lot of problems actually to, um, with the weather and that. But when, when it was working, um, that drone footage showed the the gap, you know, that that gap, that helicopter sort of look, bird's eye view of, of what's happening. And if you get that, you know, for, you know, a big chunk of, um, you know, every mile, which is what we're going to have, you know, that, yeah. that will tell the story and you don't need this, you don't necessarily need the, the, to rely on the splits every 5K. Yeah, you know, it's it's um there's another one you should watch was the 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 folks at Sidious Mag did the Texas qualifier last weekend and they used some really great drones for a uh, um a ten thousand and a five thousand to fifteen hundred down in Texas. But yeah um, the numbers that we're finding right now, like um we've done the American Track League meets and uh, the New Balance indoor and we were averaging ninety thousand on Twitter an hour and then we went we also do facebook and instagram at the same time mm -hmm. they're different platforms obviously um the audio idea makes a lot of sense you can do that pretty in and, and tim's actually quite good at that you know a lot of times i pull here i pull in the polish feed for the meats and put on hutchings uh, uh co commentary and uh you know because you know you got to hear hutchings once in a while Tim's great. Yeah. Tim's great. And, and you know, Tim, uh, I, I personally selected, you know, Tim, listen, I got, I, you know, um, we've had loads of people trying to help the event out because, yeah. you know, um, you know, Steve Cram's been helping us get it onto BBC um, and, you know, even, even volunteered to, to commentate. And I said, listen, you know, he's, he's in the Northeast and now I said, listen, let's, let's do this, for, you know, let, let's respect the pandemic sort of thing. I've got Tim, Tim's in Brighton. It's very close to us, and and yeah. Maria Mount, she you know lives locally, sort of thing. And um, and you know, so we, and, she, and Mara's great. With she's very thorough, very good with her knowledge. Yeah, and, no, she. I've, and, I've enjoyed watching her. No, you've got you you you're putting it all together on a on a tight budget, and I admire you for being able to do that. And um, I couldn't and, have done it without my old man. Jeez, I'll tell you that now. That's awesome. How's your pop doing? He's good. He's good. I'll tell you what, um, you know, he's, he's doing my nothing at the moment. Um, he's, he's, I haven't seen him this passionate for, for many a year. Okay. That's from, the, you know, he, he's, he's been, you know, former race director of London marathon. So he's been out of that for 
three or four years now completely. Yeah. Um, but even at the, you know, even sort of near the end there sort of thing. Okay. I think, um, you know, it, it, he's a very passionate guy. Um, I, I like to think I, I follow that as well. And, you know, we, we are having a, an argument a day about placement of water bottles, sure. placement of officials. Yeah. He has to be right. I have to be right. Okay. So it, so it's been going well. It, it, it's, and it, it's certainly, I mean, geez, I think yesterday we, we had an argument at 7.30 in the morning and our final argument at 10 at night. There you go. There you go. And annoyingly, he's found out about WhatsApp video. Okay. So we literally oh, have the argument face no. to face. Oh my and, God. Um, yeah. I stupidly, it took me years to get him onto WhatsApp or uh, and that. And then he, no, no, I don't need that. Don't need that. Now, he won't put it down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Adam does that with me with um, a couple things. You know, he'll send me a message and then I'll send it back to him and we go back and forth. So it keeps it good. Well, I'm glad to see that it's going so well for you. And we'll we'll get this up. And uh, if there did you want to name who the sponsor was? Yeah, um, I think so. I think so. Yeah. A little bit of love? <clears throat> I think so. Yep. Yeah. Um, how would you go into that? Um, okay. All right. So let's uh, Mike, ask about you. So we so we sort of gone with tight, but um, I don't know if there's a natural in there. We had tight budget. All right. <clears> let, <throat> let me try this. Um, so, uh, so what? So what? Yeah. Why don't you give me some like an uh, elevator speech for um, in three weeks' time? Or okay. Something like that. Yeah. You know, in three weeks' time, you're you're putting on a, an Olympic trials, and um, it's no secret that. Um, you've had to watch your budget uh, and British athletics came in and saw a need and they uh, uh, approached you and uh, said something nice about them a little earlier. And um, you mentioned that you've got a new sponsor and this sport goes nowhere without sponsors. And we can't go to the shoe companies all the time. Um, you want to tell us a little bit about what's, uh, what's going on in terms yeah, of sponsorship for you? you know, absolutely. You know, we were, we, and people don't understand. And there was a bit of a debate of, of, you know, a bit of drama on social media because we've, you know, everyone expects it and needs it to be streamed. And, and, mm -hmm. you know, there was a situation in the UK where some, some indoor meets were, were happening and, but they were at three different locations. So it was tough for British athletics to sort of do that. Um, but we were sort of in a, I think we're, it's fair to say we're in a situation that, you know, without a sponsor, we couldn't do the live streaming. So, sure. you know, I, we were a sort of, um, you know, that was highlighted by myself to try and get, engage, you know, one sponsor or, or four sponsors, you know, putting in $5,000 or, you know, and something like that. Um, and I think Muller Hall or, and, and, you know, they're, they're a partner of British Athletics and, um, and you know, a, a big partner of the sport, you know, they're at the Euro European Indoors um happening at the moment and so so Muller stepped up um you know which is a, a great you know yogurt company in, sure. in in the UK and, and and Europe so um they've stepped up you know <laughs> to make sure that you know to help British athletics out as well to to make sure the event will will happen so we will have live streaming um we hope I'm, I'm hoping Crammy can do his bit um, and, and and we'll have it on the red button, but if not, it'll be on the, all, the, all the British Athletic social media channels. Um, so we'll get to see it. Um, you know, the race walks six o'clock in the morning in, um, on Friday the 26th of March, and then um, the mixed uh, male and female marathon. Um, who goes to Sapporo? The road to Japan, um, you know, at eight o'clock, and it's going to be um, it's going to be absolutely fascinating. So, uh, that's cool. a big a big thank you to them, um, and yeah, no, I think uh, hopefully everyone else will do their bit by turning in, liking it, and uh, and saying thank you to British Athletics and and Muller for doing that. Yeah, Muller's a class act. I mean, I've come over to enough of the meets to see them, and their presence isn't overwhelming. They do a very thoughtful presence. I get. I don't even have to worry about my yogurt for a few days, and it's quite good. And uh, um, it's nice. You know, to, you know, Larry, you're only meant to eat a few of them. Yeah, yeah. thank you. I know. I know. That's. I, I shouldn't eat like ten of them. But uh, <laughs> the uh, the the thing about it is, it's nice to see non footwear companies. You and I have had this conversation before. The footwear guys do a great job, and we love them dearly. But you know, um, one of the things we'll show the sport growing up is getting sponsors like Mueller. Larry, it's even more so in a pandemic. 
you know, where every budget's a, a, a slapping, you know, and, and, you know, and who are earning during the, the lockdowns, you know, your Amazon's okay and your tech companies okay, but they're already making the money. Yeah. They, you know, everyone's going to them, so they don't need to be marketing and 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 doing everything else, you know, and everyone else is is locked down and 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 you know, fur, staff are furloughed and 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 everything else. It's tough out there, you know, it's really tough out there. And you know, for the I feel sorry for the athletes personally because this is their big exposure to get their athletes, you know, look at the marathon projects putting on an event so that people can get their time bonuses, you know, to yeah to scrape something like that and get something out of the way because they need a paycheck. The whole sport, you know, compared to many other sports, um, it, it's tough. And and without, again, you're absolutely right, you know, we could have another discussion, an argument about, um, sure. how you know, how much exposure that these other companies can get, you know, could we do more from a, from a vest point of view from the yeah. athlete? You know, I know, <clears throat> I know the new rule with two sponsors are there and everything else and i listen i get it from both sides of it but we've got to figure out some sort of way that we can get more non you know uh, non-apparel um sponsors in there you know we need we need our banks we need to to somehow get that there and and i I do fear this will be another chat but i do fear for the sport um if tokyo doesn't happen um, yeah. I fear for the sport, you know, I think it, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure it is, but on what level and everything else, you know, we really need, the athletes need it, the the events need it and um, and everything else. So we really need to figure out how we can get more um, um, other banks, other airlines into the sport and give them the courage uh, coverage that they, uh, they, they require. Well, Tom, we will take that on another day when we've got a case of Guinness sitting in front of us and we can solve many of the world's problems. But uh, thank you for this afternoon. We're going to get this up in the next week, week and a half. Good luck with the British Olympic marathon trials and the race walk. Um, This is Larry Eater with Run Blog Run, Socialing the Distance. We just featured Tom Bedford, who's the race director of the British Olympic trials marathon happening on uh, it's the it's the 26th of March. It's Friday. It is a Friday. So you're looking at the calendars. Don't think it's wrong. Good. All right. Well, I will. We will get that up on our stuff, and we will be following up with you next week, my friend. Thanks Thank a lot. You, Larry. Cheers. See you later. Hey, sports fans, it's Larry Eater. It's your favorite program. Run Well, it's your favorite program, Socialing the Distance. It's on, of course, your favorite uh, blog, Run Blog Run. And this week we featured, once again, Tom Bedford, the director of the British Olympic Trials Marathon, which is happening March 26th. That's a Friday. They've now got a 20K race walk with it as well. The good news is, and the reason why we brought him on was all the lessons he's learned from the pandemic and talking to Josh Cox and Ben Rosario at the Marathon Project, the race they had uh, last December 20th uh, in Arizona, where uh, Sarah Hall ran magnificently, as did Cara D'Amato, and some amazing men's performances, too. Just mind-boggling. So Tom Bedford's always been a smart guy. His dad's David Bedford, former race director in London. David's been helping Tom put this together, and it seems like they're having a good time with it. It's going to be an interesting course, one loop of 1,695 meters, 12 loops of 3,333 meters. Uh, They're going to have streaming video with uh, Tim Hutchings and uh, uh, um, uh, uh, Mara Yamuchi, and um, then uh, Mara Yamuchi, excuse me, Mara, and... uh, the British athletics has come in and footed the bill and thanks to Joe Coates for doing that. And they brought in Mueller, the uh, yogurt company that I like so much when I'm over in Europe in, in the UK. Mueller is a very thoughtful sponsor. They've been involved with British athletics and European athletics for some time now. And um, I think that um, it's, uh, uh, it's, um, and it's nice to see them come in. Uh, a lot's on the line. You're either making the team or not making the team. There's no money involved with this one. This is about getting good performances or getting a qualifier for the Commonwealth Games in 2022. Uh, Tom Bedford is a real renaissance man in running. He was a uh, steepler who's run, I believe, in the 840s, 850s. He also, on a bet, he ran a 219 marathon. Um, a, a very fine athlete in his own uh, terms. 
uh, his lovely wife Jade and him put on the Richmond Richmond Distance Festival in a botanical garden, uh, and it's a one of a kind event. It'll be uh, held in the fall of next year, around my birthday weekend, September 10th and 11th, about 10,000 people and all the distances there. But March 26th, all the eyes of England are going to be on the British Olympic Marathon Trials and the 20K Race Walk. Tom Bedford is the race director, and I don't think they could have found anybody else who would love it more. Um, And with his dad helping him, you know, everything's going to be great, and his lovely wife championing everything as well. So... This is Larry Eater with Run Blog Run. This is Socialing the Distance. We just featured Tom Bedford, the race director at the British Olympic Marathon Trials and 20K Trials. Thank you for viewing and listening. If you like us, like us at Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. If you love us, subscribe on the YouTube. Stay safe.